United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Through the last minutes, to prove all yays. Any yays? Yay. <laughs> And it's approved. Old business. Made on conditional offers. Travis Wilson, uh, one of the officers that was <clears throat> given a conditional offer, has uh, made it through PERF, I think, quicker than anyone we've had. Um, I hand delivered his packet to PERF downtown Indianapolis. And I think within about three days or four, we got a response. And sometimes uh, it takes a couple months. Uh, unfortunately, the contact I, that I have there uh, when I work in the governor's office retires in August. So we're probably back to the two to three month stage after, after she leaves, unless she in, introduces me to somebody else. But uh, Travis has passed all his requirements uh, for PERF. He will report to the uh, Law Enforcement Academy in Plainfield on June the 18th to begin his police uh, academy training. I believe it's June the 11th. He goes for a physical fitness um, entrance test, uh, which he he was one of the tops in physical fitness uh, when, when we had our testing here, which, which would be no problem. But uh, that's the biggest update from him. He's graduated from college. He has his bachelor's degree. I believe he's back living in Avon, and uh, we've kept in contact with him. Uh, so he should should go to the academy June the 18th. Oh. And that'll put him done when? It's 16 weeks. I don't know the, the, exact, uh, <clears throat> the exact date. Any questions on that? We're waiting on Josh got here. Okay, let's, one of the officers got caught, caught in traffic. If... Uh, we had three officers that were, that were involved that I want to present a life award to, and they were involved if uh, <clears throat> the three of them would come up. I think Josh is probably quick after that, but if Sergeant Wilson other would come up here. These officers, along with uh, Officer Geiger, uh, were the first to respond to a residential fire on uh, February the 23rd, uh, just not too far down the street. From my understanding, and I, I viewed the video from one of their, coming up, Josh. I believe it was from Josh's uh, <clears throat> recorder that I viewed, or Southern, whoever, uh, one of these guys. And uh, uh, the video really didn't show the total extent of the fire or what these guys um, faced uh, as I looked at the video. I talked with their sergeant uh, about it. He, he clued me in more. And uh, when they got there, what you can see is a, I'm going to call it a back room. I wasn't at the scene, but a back room that was, was engulfed in flames. And the family was there with buckets of water trying to, uh, to put this fire out, which was, there was no way that was going to happen. But not only that really wasn't the, I don't think, the most serious part of the fire. It was the wall that led from downstairs uh, and upstairs uh, to the bedrooms and to that part of the house that was as well on fire and inside of the wall, which even forced some of the family members out on the roof. These guys responded. What I, what I could hear was they had to really persuade uh, the family and the occupants of that residence, let's get out. We got to get out now. You know, as all of us, there were personal things they wanted to try to get. And uh, these guys convinced them and got them out of there in time. Also had to assist some family members that were out on the roof because they couldn't make it down the staircase uh, with the heat and so forth from, that, from, the, from the fire in the wall. And we only can speculate what could have happened or what might have happened if, if our officers hadn't responded in, in a timely manner after they got there and called in and the fire department uh, arrived as well to help rescue, I think, some of the family pets. You guys correct me if I'm wrong here. But uh, again, very proud of these three guys, and they're very deserving of a life-saving award, and I want to publicly commend them uh, tonight for that. 
that they will get a, a, <clears throat> a certificate as we've given, presented in the past, uh, a life saving award to Sergeant Chase Wilson, Officer Joshua Gager, and Officer Anthony Stubb. So we can get a picture of all what's in here. Why don't you face your. <laughs> they want to take a picture of you with the certificates. There you go. That's it. Big smiles. What up here, guys? Some other awards that I, uh, where I want to recognize um, six other officers. This was actually going to be done earlier in the year, and I had a sponsor uh, that um, took another position with another company who was going to help us with some gift cards and so forth. And then once they left, that company uh, was not going to, uh, <clears throat> to assist. And I uh, spoke with uh, Marcy Anderson, the Danville Walmart town manager. And she was very eager, as she always says, to help the police department, especially when it comes to, to recognizing our officers. I told her what I want to give these awards out for. And uh, even though it's delayed, uh, I wanted to be able to give them some type of, of a gift card from someplace. So that's why we're doing it in May, and it wasn't in probably February or March. But I, I just want to call them up here one at a time. And for 2017, the uh, officer with the most criminal arrest was Officer Nate Lean. There's a $25 gift card from Walmart. Thank you very much. You can buy bullets. <laughs> the next person I want to recognize with a $25 gift card from Walmart, as well as a certificate for the Concentrated Traffic Patrol Award. Uh, when I came here, no one would ever have told me this would uh, be the person. Uh, but I've got, to, uh, I've got to talk a little bit about Brian, Sergeant Brian Everling. He sets the standard for concentrated traffic patrols almost every time he's out there doing them. He does them consistently. He monitor, monitors his squad uh, to make sure they do them as well. But he uh, has definitely set the bar for concentrated traffic patrols in 2017, and he continues to do that in 2018. So the uh, 2017 Concentrated Traffic Patrol Award goes to Sergeant Everling. You've heard us talk about, uh, excuse me, about part-time officers, full-time officers, and so forth. Uh, we have minimal staff when it comes to part-time officers, but we've got one that will work anytime we call him. It doesn't really matter when it is or what the detail is, uh, whether it's on patrol or if it's assisting. Uh, me down for some of the concerts on the square or, or any kind of off-duty uh, help that we need. Uh, officer Ed Jordan is always there, and he is the 2017 part-time officer of the year, and he receives a $50 gift card from Walmart. Next, and I found this every place I went from, from when I ran details, security details for, for the different governors to the city of Indianapolis, Marion County, Peru. There's always some guy that you can depend on to, to be your support person. And um, uh, without a doubt, this guy wears a lot of hats on this department while he's the school resource officer. Obviously, that's Matt Oliphant, Corporal Matt Oliphant. But uh, you know, some of the big things we see him do is the national night out, uh, Christmas with a cop, a lot of things that, that uh, are, are known in the public, but the things you don't hear about is 
the times that he gets bothered at home with our officers and, and me as well. Uh, when he's off duty, we've got a radio problem, we've got a question, we've got a computer problem. Uh, he's the person, person that we go to. He's helped me a, a ton with SOPs, with financial uh, and, and budgeting, uh, as well as was, was a big player in the ordering and, uh, of the new vehicles f for, all the, for all the officers. So I want to recognize Matt. Again, Walmart sponsored a $50 gift card for the 2017 Support Officer of the Year. We had two guys that uh, I looked at this, I'm going to guess, a dozen times, and there was no way to recognize one without the other. Uh, and I want both of these guys to come up here, Sergeant Jeffrey Slayback and Officer Josh Gager. These guys are 2017 Enforcement Officer of the Year, and just to let you know, Sergeant Slayback, uh, <laughs> along with being the acting uh, squad leader, you know, while he was still a patrolman and did a good job, and, and then was promoted to sergeant during this year, he uh, led led the the team, led our department with 92 criminal arrests, excuse me, 92 total arrests, 37 traffic arrests. He also did not miss one sick day, not one hour, uh, and not many people can say that. I don't care if you're a police officer or where you're at. Uh, and he was second in the amount of warnings he issued to violators, as well as second in the amount of traffic stops uh, that he made. And Sergeant Slayback, along with Walmart, thanks for your, for your work. Uh, Chief, do we need any of the other policemen with him? It's just, or I mean, we can let all the other policemen go home, it sounds like. <laughs> The other officer I mentioned is Josh Gager. I've, I've, you know, I've only been there two years, but I've seen Josh mature and uh, really get into the flow of what I'm going to call police work. He, he does a great job uh, in, in not just stopping vehicles for, with probable cause for traffic uh, arrest or DUI arrest, whatever it may be, uh, but he does, does a good job with police work and follow-up. Makes a lot of drug arrest, uh, and <clears throat> he uh, led the department in traffic stops, he led the department in DUIs, he led the department in warnings, and he was second on traffic arrests. So the first award I want to give him is for his OWI arrest. He made the most uh, of the department for 2017. And then he is also our 2017 Enforcement Officer of the Year. Uh, and very deserving and continues to do a great job uh, in 2018. And again, this is from Walmart. <laughs> Thanks, guys. And these guys are the ones that, like I said, set, set the mark for others to follow. We've got a great department. Some, some guys are better, officers are better at other things. Some are better at public relations. Some are better at going to domestics. Uh, some are better at dealing with uh, what few homeless that, that we have coming through here. And some are just good traffic people, and some are good criminal people. Uh, but we've got, we don't have any officer that's not doing his job. Uh, but these are the guys that, that were easy to, uh, to document stats that the assistant chief uh, kept. And I didn't think it would be right if we didn't, didn't recognize them with something. Uh, so I appreciate all the work everybody, everybody did in, in 2017. We had a great year. As, as I said, I think at the end of 17 or the first of 18, we'll have a hard time matching the numbers and uh, really the dedication that these guys put out in 2017. Thank you, guys. You guys are great. We feel safe. Is the next thing on the agenda with the uh, hiring of a part-time officer? Is that yeah, kind of covered up my agenda? Here we go. Uh, yeah, the parking enforcement part-time. Right. The parking enforcement had already <clears throat> had already hired uh, that person, and it's the same person. It's, it's Bernard. Uh, I think you were emailed uh, a copy of, of my recommendation, as well as I think I hand delivered you a hard copy. Uh, but you know, if you have any questions, I'd be glad to answer. And Bernard is a certified police officer. Thank you. Hi. Thanks, guys. 
here in, in Indiana. Uh, he's been 15 plus years with Gary Police Department. He's worked for a couple of railroad police departments. He's currently a full-time officer with the IU Health uh, Police Department up in Fishers. Uh, he has been on the street, I'm going to say, enforcing traffic uh, violations this week. I've talked to him while I was on vacation, and uh, he's, he's out there hitting it. My goal here was uh, we can have a, if you will approve, this uh, part-time police officer position uh, is to have him in uniform while he is doing his parking enforcement and it gives us another officer on the street that we have an emergency he can quickly go uh, on another time card to a part-time officer pay rate and that's really the only difference in it. Uh, it, it gives us another officer uh, in a car as well as walking uh, on the square that the public can see so we're going to get the visibility that I've stressed from the time I came here. I think it's a win-win, I think, for us to be able to hire somebody with this kind of caliber and experience uh, as a parking enforcement officer uh, is unheard of. I mean, it's great. I went through probably at least 15 applications that were submitted for the parking enforcement officer position. I interviewed, I believe, four, maybe five of what I thought were the top candidates, and there was no one that was anywhere close to being qualified like, like he is. And I think, and I, I believe he will give us the same uh, professionalism and service to, to our town uh, as a part-time police officer. And what we have to uh, watch is we have to make sure that he does not work. He can't work. Um, he has to work less than 30 hours a week in that part-time status. And that is a cumulative with his part-time police officer position and his uh, parking enforcement combined. That's per week. So, so you have to differentiate. I mean, he's going to be on uh, the his, clock as one or the other. Right. And there'll be two different time cards. If, if when that does occur, um, his hourly rate for parking is I want to say fifteen dollars and forty-eight cents, and his hourly rate for uh, part time is nineteen dollars and something. Get your question answered. So he'll have maybe twelve. I think at one time. He of the 15 hours parking enforcement. And how do you determine what other part time hours go? Will he have a set schedule or will he be there? Yeah. yeah, no one has a, as, as a part timer has a set schedule for part time hours other than Ed when he's okay. dealing on, on the first and third Mondays with town council and, and police commission, uh, providing security here in the, in the chambers. So. Our, our part time is, is an, on an ad, as needed basis. So there may be some weeks that he may work 29 hours as a parking enforcement uh, and is not needed as a part time. Uh, and then there may be weeks where he works, you know, 15 hours uh, parking and we put him at 14 and a half or whatever uh, on, on the enforcement side uh, with, with patrol. He has to be trained yet uh, on, on patrol. Uh, I believe his uniforms have been fitted and, and ordered. Uh, but it saves us uh, cost-wise with uniforms. We don't have to supply uniforms on a parking enforcement side and a part-time side. You know, he'll just wear that, uh, that officer uniform all the time. And I've already discussed this with uh, the city clerk as well as the town manager's office, so we're, we're clear on how we would uh, differentiate between the, the two different hourly rates. So is the need for the... Are the part-time needs um, going to dictate how much time you'll spend in the parking enforcement needs? In other words, are you considering the part-time officer role as being the primary important role here? I'm, I don't know that the one's more important than the other. The primary, his primary role is parking enforcement, and we're going to make sure that, that that occurs. And like him and I have discussed, you know, probably the minimum you could work is probably two and a half hours on a, on a Parking enforcement day in order to uh, monitor and, and enforce the two-hour parking uh, limit downtown. Um, so his primary is, is parking, but it gives us another body, and again, it gives us a police officer out there when he's doing parking enforcement, a uh, full, fully accredited police officer, as what we've never had in the past. Chief, the other parking meter people. They used to get abused out there. You know, I really didn't get too many complaints from uh, 
Shelby's the only park enforcement officer that we've had since I've been here. Uh, I don't think really that, uh, a whole lot of problems. You know, you, you get you get some verbal uh, confrontation once in a while, uh, but that's that's everywhere. It's the same way with our guys on the street, uh, and I think I think that will diminish even with having someone there in a uniform yeah. uh, that that looks professional, and uh, I think they will probably get less static than probably what she did. Yeah. I think you're right. Right in the way out there this week when I looked yeah, out there. He, he's, people got yeah. used to parking all day. <laughs> I will say, he, he did go around, I believe it was on Thursday or Friday of the week before, and uh, to the different merchants and people on the square in, in the courthouse and so forth and let them know that he'd be out Monday uh, officially hitting That's it. That's a good idea. So. I don't think there's anything in the SOPs or any regulation says that it has to be approved, but I'm just publicly, you know, giving you my recommendation for this part-time position and uh, see what your feelings are on it. Thank you. The uh, the part-time. Uh, position uh, we've got to revamp it somehow we've got to get more of a commitment than what we have uh, from some I know one of our officers went to a, a drug task force so he doesn't he doesn't get any hours in anymore and the other the other two are aren't seen very often I think uh, my, my suggestion would be we're really low at $19 and I'm gonna say 12 cents but it's 19 something uh, per hour I think we need to get that uh, raised and it won't affect our our, our budget because we'll just have to work within the uh, the amount of overtime we have for part-time officers but I think that needs to be raised to the uh, same hourly rate as what our uh, full-time officer getting which is 24 25 right, right around there uh, it's just we can't uh, can't recruit anybody it gets so low they can go out on Saturday at, at a traffic detail or uh, outside of even outside of Hendricks County or definitely outside of Danville for $30 plus an hour. Uh, so it's tough to get guys who are credited full time police officers to come and work for maybe two thirds of what they're making on their own department. So if no one has any problem with that, I'm gonna, I'd like to, I haven't discussed that uh, thoroughly with Jenny yet, uh, but I, I, I don't think it's going to be an issue with her. So I didn't have any problems when I raised the uh, <clears throat> parking enforcement hourly rate. We were way behind on that as well. So. Okay. What, what type of difference was it? Nineteen something to? Would you say? I, I think it's probably about a five dollar difference, maybe five fifty. Yeah. Are you ready for your report? Pardon. Any questions on any of the, so far? The stats for the month, again, officers, the department did a great job. Um, we were a, a less on our traffic stops this month, but we were still um, above the 2017 average by about 12. But we had a, we had a really uh, big month of traffic stops in March. <clears throat> Our criminal arrests were up by four this month compared to last month, and uh, our traffic arrest was up by six. Uh, our OWI arrests were down two, but we're still like 3.5 above uh, the average for 2017. So the guys are out there, again, looking for intoxicated drivers, looking for probable cause to stop vehicles. Um, and our total arrest went from 47 to 57, and that's still about three and a half above what our 2017 average. And we had a great, great 2017 for, for enforcement. Any question on any of these stats that I could? I'll keep you updated as uh, I get some, <clears throat> some ideas and some options to uh, try to recruit for some part-time uh, police officers. 
What we have to watch is the cost. It, it costs uniforms, usually with just a couple of uniforms per, per unit, and then you've got, uh, if their department won't allow them to use their, their weapon, won't allow them to use their gun belt, holster, and so forth, then we have to uh, supply that. So that's why our numbers won't get big, uh, because we don't have a budget to get, to get big with it. But I'd like to at least find one more uh, part-time officer that could, could assist uh, when we do need it. Is that pretty typical that they allow that use? No, some departments uh, will and, and some won't. And then sometimes you'll get uh, where a department, maybe it come from a department that has brown, brown, brown leather and ours is black. Uh, so it just depends on the department. That's all I have, unless anybody okay, has any you, questions. Chief. You're more than welcome. Uh, comments from the board or, or staff? What's up? Suzanne and Laura for doing the minutes. <laughs> They're great. They were very yes. complete, concise. Uh, yes, takes a burden. Yes. Yeah. They did a great job. Thank you. Dan shows a good interest in it. She comes down or has called me since the last week. Checking on it to see what we need and if it's, you know, if it's okay. Very thorough. You okay, Jimmy? Great. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting adjourned. Thank you very much for coming.